crush a stem. So you must remember that it has to be a significant, some amount of distance from the side branch so that you will end with as culot stunting. So once you have placed the stem there, then uh, and dilate and deploy the stent. Remember to do a pot because uh, if you don't do a pot and you try to wire across the stent struts into the main vessel, you might some, sometimes inadvertently go out from the stent struts. So I remember years ago, uh, 10 years ago, that is, uh, that's what happened to me. So remember pot first uh, and uh, then you can wire the, uh, the diagonal branch in this case into the main vessel. So a flip-flop of wires is, is uh, uh, safer. So once you have done that, uh, you remove, uh, once you wire it into the main vessel, then the LED, you pull out the wire and then uh, pull out the jail wire and then get it in. Uh, you can actually do not have to wire it inside the side branch. Some people may do that, but you don't really have to because you don't require any more wiring at that point in time. Now, you then dilate the stand struts uh, towards the main vessel. Now the question is what is the balloon size? At least a diameter of 2.0, if not larger, because you need that amount of uh, balloon dilatation to allow the stand to go across. In this case, it's quite safe. You are going to use a 2.5 balloon to dilate the stand struts. Once you have done that, then this is results after. So you can see that results, uh, the LED, at least in this case, is quite well prepared from the initial balloon dilatation. Then you put in the stent and uh, the stent uh, should be sized according to the main vessel in the distal. And uh, preferably you end the stent uh, slightly more uh, proximal than the stents that you place in the side branch. And this is to ensure uh, that uh, you can get a well uh, expanded stent, uh, especially if you're using a slightly bigger stent than the side branch stent. So once you have done that, you deploy the stent and once after deploying the stent, you remember again to pot the proximal uh, vessel to ensure that there's good stent uh, ex expansion in the proximal main vessel. Once you have done uh, that, then you recross uh, the, the stent struts uh, into the side branch and uh, wire into the left main, uh, into the main vessel. And uh, you have to end any two vessel, a uh, two stent strategy with kissing. So you should have a two-step uh, balloon inflation, and uh, this can be just balloon dilatation. And it's preferable that you should go in with a non-compliant balloon with high pressure to ensure stand good, uh, good stand uh, position, and then you end with kissing. Once you have done with uh, kissing, then you should be thinking about a final pot if that is necessary. Remember always to try to deflate the balloon simultaneously at the same time because uh, sometimes you deflate one after the other, you can have some distortion of the stand struts. So you don't want to, you want to avoid that from occurring. So the final part uh, is preferable to be done, uh, um, especially if, uh, if you have an imaging, uh, then uh, that will be good. But uh, if you are not going to have an imaging assessment, then the final part is quite crucial in a sense. And this is the final results that, that was shown. So a pleasing results in the end for the LED diagonal. Now, one of the other things to consider when you put in the stand, especially when you put in into a large vessel, the, like the left main stem, would be the ideal stand for culot stenting. Obviously, one has to use the current generation stands. Uh, for large vessels, you need to have large cells that will be able to expand very well. You also need to know the expansion capability of each uh, stents that is available right now with regards to the sense stand size and also with the vessel, to the, uh, vessel size. Okay. And good recrossability is one of the key uh, things to have in uh, in uh, ideal stent because that will make uh, your procedure so much safer. So these are some of the uh, DS uh, designs uh, over expansion some of uh, the current stands that we have now that can, uh, you know, can enlarge much more than, uh, than the actual size of the stand to start off with. So any of the stands, as long as you're comfortable with it and you're familiar with the stands. So culotte stenting, if it's uh, the indication is for true bifurcation, once again, the distal main vessel and the side branch have similar diameters. The advantage is that you can have a more homogeneous distribution of struts at the bifurcation. Obviously, there are some certain limitations or disadvantages 
there's some more uh, steps that uh, it is required, especially in trying to wire the main vessel inside branch, and then you need to open the stand struts up. It can be technically demanding and time consuming, but in the end, it's uh, going to be uh, useful to know this uh, technique. There's also concern that there's a stand, uh, side branch stand malposition, especially when the proximal main vessel is much uh, uh, larger in, in terms of discrepancy in terms of diameter. And at the same time, in the proximal main vessel at the level carina, you expect that there's some excess in metal or stand struts in that area. So we have talked about this classical culotte, but uh, one of the other advantage of a culotte is that you can have, or you can even consider a provisional culotte in the sense that uh, you are considering whether you need to stand uh, the side branch or not to stand the side branch. So in this case, the, the opposite goes in the sense that you stand into the main vessel first, and then you assess uh, the uh, final results. And if you feel that you need to stand the side branch, then you can even consider a culotte uh, in this case. So a provisional culotte by stenting the main vessel before the side branch. So to summarize uh, the culotte stenting, it is meant for true bifurcation lesion and where the distal main vessel and the side branch uh, size in, uh, are almost similar in diameter. And uh, the angulation is uh, fairly shallow, probably less than 70 degrees. Uh, and if you stand uh, in the classical culotte, you should stand the angulated uh, vessel first. And in most cases, this is the side branch. Remember, final casing, balloon, and port are essential. And you can have imaging that will be ideal because you're aiming for a zero null opposition target. So thank you very much uh, for the kind uh, uh, attention. Jack? Thanks, uh, Rosli. Uh, indeed, that was a very comprehensive uh, lecture. I really like it a lot. But for the purpose of the fellow, can I invite now, just before I move on to the live case, Dr. Sidney Lowe, to maybe just provide a few other pointers for this particular session. Oh, all these points that Rosli put up, what do you think are the most important barriers to cross for the fellows? the concept to understand so that when we do the live case later, we can focus on those points. And maybe uh, Fahim to also answer later whether stands make a difference, whether we need to know the stand characteristics. Is it that important for the current generation stand? Sydney, please. Yeah, so I, I think it's number one, uh, one of the key things about the anatomy is about, as you mentioned, is the size of the branch vessels. And they're very similar in the culotte because I think one is the understanding of how big you can dilate the stent strut. Now, there is another variation that uh, you, you not, didn't mention very much, which is called the string culotte or the ultra mini culotte, where only a little bit hangs out into, into the main branch. And you try to catch that with your wire and then dilate that one out. And so you have a ring. Now, remember that the main problem with that is you have to understand how large you can dilate a strut to make sure that that vessel is not too large so that now it's not gonna be enough. So it's restraining the expansion of the main branch stent. It can be very flush on if you can do it well and the string culotte can be done quite well if the vessel sizing is okay. The other thing is that in, in countries where you can afford it and you can do imaging, the teaching has always been, for example, in Korea, I suspect, is to do imaging from both branches into the main, particularly left main to the ostium and understand the distribution of plaque, which you've already mentioned, is mostly on the shoulders. And there's very little uh, plaque, generally speaking, in the carina or flow divider. And so you need to make sure this is well covered. And then the culotte covers it very well. Um, the question really in your mind is that, what is the coverage if you do ultra mini culotte? Or now there's another variation called double kissing culotte, or DK culotte, uh, which is better. I think that most of the time, when you do the post imaging from both branches, you can get a very good expansion, particularly if you do a good kiss and you do a good pot. The pot uh, in, the, uh, in the October trial, there's a problem with pot if you do it badly. So you lose the advantage of your kissing dilatation and you can destroy uh, kind of what, what the kissing does is the distribution equally around that bifurcation. So you have to understand that you have to leave enough length of a vessel so it's difficult in short left mains because you might be actually encroaching on the carina or into one vessel and you destroy the kissing uh, dilatation advantage of the double uh, non-compliant balloons. And so you need to understand the short balloon and how it does and how do the pot, and the pot is kind of essential to do well. Otherwise you can destroy the kissing dilatation. 
So Sydney, if there's one point you want the fellows to yes. learn in the live case, what is yes. in your mind an important learning point for fellows? Okay, uh, I think Rosie's mentioned it. So in the classical culotte, control side branch. So do the more angulated vessel first. Okay, good point. Uh, Dr. Fahim, uh, what is one point you want the fellows to learn from the live case? Uh, you're muted, Fahim, sorry. Sorry about that. So I, I think that, you know, something that Rossby already talked about and Sydney too, that, you know, you, you choose the right patient. So I've seen people do culottes with, you know, a 2.0 or a 2.5 vessel and approximately it's like almost a 4.0. And those are not the cases, uh, you know, with modern stents, you know, you can sometimes get away with it because a lot of the stents now are able to expand a lot. But I think the, 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 the mechanics of that is still just doesn't seem right. So I think, you know, it's important to find, a, you know, a bifurcation where the proximal vessel and the side branch are, you know, within about 0.5 of each other and not more than that. Excellent Don't put point. a cool so, on a 2 side branch. The right patient, almost similar size side branch and main branch. Uh, Dr. Joshua Win, what is your one learning point you want to drive home in this uh, workshop? for fellows? I think the most important thing is um, the, the assess the bifurcation angle and the um, the OSTM of the side branch. You know, the, for the ASD uh, tool or technique, you know, the, uh, the bifurcation angle should be shallow. Otherwise, you need to choose the other bifurcation intervention technique. Yeah. So that, that point, is a great one, but we'll debate that a bit later. So one point, this is about choosing the right patient. Remember our objective. So we got same size, main and side, angulated branch first, um, shallow angle is preferred. Dr. Fazila, what point, what one point do you want the fellows to learn from this session? Well, I think if you have the option use imaging because imaging in a double stent strategy will give you great immediate as well as long-term results. So we'll okay. share what we mean by imaging later and the points in imaging. Dr. Takashi, what is your one point you want the fellows to learn? You're muted. You're the, yeah. Okay, thank you. So, so the practice is different from each country. So in Japan, we use an IVAS or an OCT, sometimes OFDI for almost all cases, especially for the bifurcation regions. So uh, I think uh, the most important point is, uh, you know, the, the, the best results after the cure. So if you see, you want to see the, the results, I think uh, imaging is very important, especially uh, left main bifurcation. So, if possible, uh, IBAS guided uh, bifurcation PCI is the best option. Okay. Great point. Uh, can, I, can I ask Kajima, Kajia about yeah. one question? The question for the Japanese operator is that is it better to do single stent? <laughs> is that more preferred than the cooler? I'll just ask. Uh, okay, so yes, now our practice is uh, the single stand KVT was just single stand, pot, just pot is a uh, uh, first priority. But as uh, Rossi already mentioned, that if you choose a uh, provisional culotte, uh, you can choose a one stand KVT or a, one, a two stand strategy. So the, the, it's uh, good to know the uh, culotte technique. Culotte technique is a uh, uh, very basic uh, two stand strategy. So the, this seminar is very useful for, for you know young operators. So we'll, we'll come back to Dr. Pham later because he's going to teach us on the uh, Ivers lecture about how to optimize them. A call for opinion there. So we saw sort of like got a rough gauge of the ideal patient, the things to watch out for, but it's not fully fleshed out yet. So we'll go to the live case now. So hopefully that will flesh out some of the points that's brought up. So can we share the case history for the live case briefly? No. Yep. So now you can share the case history. Okay. Can you hear us? He is Jack. 
Yeah, we can hear you loud and clear. You don't. Have yeah, to all right, great. Okay, so uh, uh, welcome everybody. Nice to see everybody uh, on the computer. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, uh, um, it's honored to um, be invited here with Chiang to do a live demonstration here. So um, Chiang is going to present this uh, case history. Yeah. All right. Okay. Um, so thanks again for attending. So today we have um, a case on the table. He's seventy-five year olds. Uh, he's, a, he's a man with a background history of diabetes, um, hypertension, uh, but otherwise was previously quite fit and well. Uh, he just came in to us about two days ago. He came in with um, a non-ST elevation MI. Um, echo showed um, uh, EF of 42% with some regional wall motion abnormalities in um, uh, the inferior territories. So we brought him into the lab yesterday for a diagnostic angiogram, um, and that showed that he had um, two vessel disease involving both the... Uh, uh, austere of the uh, LED and circ, as well as a uh, distal left main um, um, uh, stenosis. So I think you can see the angiograms um, at the moment. Um, all right, so currently you have uh, on the left-hand side the uh, a cranial view. Now on the cranial view, you can see that the uh, left main osteal LED looks a bit hazy. Um, in, in terms of diameter stenosis, it doesn't look too bad, but it definitely looks hazy. On the spider view on the right-hand panel, the osteum of the circ uh, looks probably tight, um, and there's also a further uh, proximal uh, to mid uh, circumflex uh, lesion as well. Um, show the next view. Now this is the AP caudal, and I think on the AP caudal you can very well appreciate that the distal left main um, is uh, tight, uh, about 70% tight, but definitely looks significant um, here on this, uh, on this view. So what we know for sure is that the, there's a lesion in the proximal circ. The ostium of the circ also looks tight, and the distal left main looks tight. The of the uh, ostium of the LED looks um, hazy, and geographically not very tight. Uh, so provisionally it was Medina, you know, one 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 or one zero one, um, but nonetheless, uh, yesterday the decision was to uh, have a further discussion with him, give him the opportunity to consider um, bypass grafting um, as an option. Um, instead of um, left main uh, PCI. Uh, so after um, some discussion yesterday with him and the family, he has uh, opted to uh, proceed with PCI and that's why he's here today, um, uh, just in time, if you like, for, for our uh, 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 demonstration. So uh, that's the case. Yeah, Sandeep, can we switch back to uh, CAFLAB, please? Uh, Aaron, yes. can you tell me what is the main learning point you want the fellows to learn with your demonstration? Uh, I can't hear you very well, Jack. And uh, can somebody up, up the volume a little bit? Uh, so, Jack so was every a... learning point of. So, in the QLOT, you're teaching fellows now, right? So, yeah, what yes. is the main learning point you heard what the other faculty has said? What is okay. the point you want to demonstrate or you want the fellows to bring home today? Yeah, so I think um, the difference between the main difference between DK crash and, and uh, QLOT is that um, if you have two vessels that need to be. Uh, uh, very important that uh, you need to keep the wire in. Uh, DK crush actually is a is a is a more uh, preferred method because it won't lose any branch. So once you stand the branch, you crush it. That branch is patent, and you can stand the other one. For collar, um you may lose one branch. Depends on how tight the uh, the ostium of the other branch is. Because once you stand it, the other branch ostium may get compromised, and you may have difficulties uh, wiring that branch. Because of the ostium is pinched, yeah. So, so for for clot, I mean, if you have a side branch, both side branch, which is very critically narrow, then you um, you have to be pretty uh, careful because you may lose uh, one of the branches. Yeah. So great point. So uh, you you have to pull wire back. You have to change out wire again for clot. So yeah. um, maybe Chiang also for you, what is a learning point you want the fellows to bring home? Um, yeah, so I think I think those are great points. Everyone's made um, good points. I think the other thing, uh, when you come when it comes to left main, especially left main bifurcation um, uh, PCI, is to you know really understand the lesion properly with um, intravascular imaging. Um, and so today we have used uh, uh, we will use intravascular imaging. I think that that really helps to uh, optimize your um, stent sizing and your uh, final PCI results as well. So. Um... I think we'll let you show us what you've done so far before I start asking the fellows in the gallery some questions, particularly okay. my late coming Singapore fellows. First, <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> so maybe so, you'd like to share with us uh, yeah, so what uh, you've done so far and your strategy for this case and why. Okay, so we, we this is the angiogram that you've seen. So the question is whether the LED uh, lesion is tight, but if it is, it's a borderline lesion in the offset LED, but uh, if we want to stand the circ, 
um, I think the, the LED ostium will probably get compromised. So we, even if it's more dilation, we already decided that we're going to do a two sense technique. So obviously we're going to do a culotte uh, in this uh, session. So um, uh, the choice between culotte and DK crush is a lot depend on what uh, Rosalie had mentioned, the size of the vessels and also the angle of these two branches. Yeah. So the size, these are both trio vessels from angiographically. So it's, it's more favorable for culotte. The angle wise, actually in this case, I, I may have preferred a, 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 a crush technique for this one because the angle is, is quite, uh, is about 90 degree. So maybe it's better for, for a crush, but um, well, anyhow, I mean, for both techniques, uh, it, it can be done. Yep. So um, what we did is uh, we, we want to just show you the, the actual uh, uh, culotte stenting rather than doing the pre-dilatation and everything. So we've done some work. So um, we um, pre-dilated the third lesion and then uh, and the osteum, uh, uh, the the the, um, the left the left main as well, in order to for the iris to go down. So we just show you the iris in the third. Actually, we skip the iris of the third because we, we just want to uh, uh, tell what's the size of the uh, the circumflex. It's about trio. Yeah, it's trio vessels because we want to put a stand there first. Next, and then we do the LED uh, iris. Um, sure. So can we play the iris? Please? Yeah, show sure, the second pullback. Yeah. So it'd be interesting to see what um, the iris show for the osteo LED. Yeah. yeah, so this is the pullback from the uh, proximal LED. It's now in the proximal LED. Um, so you see mostly fibrotic pla uh, plaque. There's a little bit of calcium in the nine o'clock uh, region, but mostly fibrous. Coming to the osteum now of the LED, you can see it starts to get tight just, just in the osteum of the uh, LED. So this is, this is really a true um, uh, bifurcation uh, lesion, Medina 111. This is in the distal left main. The left main also has um, moderate amounts of um, uh, plaque um, all the way back to the uh, uh, osteum as well. That's in the aorta. Yeah. yeah. So, so can I did... take a pause here, uh, Chi Yang and uh, Aaron? Can I ask Dr. Takashi, in Japan, do you, what, what are you looking out for when you do this? Uh, is it truly just vessel size, plug distribution, like what Rossi was talking about. For the fellow, what, what is one learning point <coughs> from uh, Ivers pre-standing? Let's see, I'll see replay the Ivers. I uh, just replay the Ivers. Yeah, can we, ob Van? can we go back to Ivers replay. imaging and replay that? So can you tell me what your, for the fellow, what do you actually look no, this for? Is not, yeah, this is the uh, left me LED. No, no. Just... Yeah, go back to the start of the pullback. Start of the pullback. Yeah. Yeah. I can't hear anything. Uh, yeah, it's okay. Uh, we'll just let it run. Uh, so, Dr. Rosley, Sydney, and Fahim, anyone else who feel free to jump in for any pointers for the fellows, if you like. One screen, right? Yeah. So uh, once again, uh, Jack, looking at the yep. plaque distributions, a lot of plaque around, very concentric around here. And you can see that very commonly, the plaque is exactly what you expect in the bifurcation. It, it's straddled across the shoulders. And commonly, osteo-LED stenting is quite difficult to do because the plaque, particularly with, it extends from the left main across. So commonly, you see a lot of left main stenting in Korea. That's because there's so much imaging has been done. And we know that there is a, a lot of plaque that extends across that shoulder. So you, you see here, you can't get away with not standing the LED because uh, you can't get away with just standing the ostium because uh, the plaque extension, it's very much throughout the whole thing all, all, all the way to the ostium of the left main. So there's also the other question about how much of the left main do you do? Is it okay to land in the middle if there's no disease? But the disease here is extensive. It, it goes all the way to the ostium. So you often will have to stand the left main, you know, across to the LED. Um, That's a great point, Sydney. Yeah. Mm. Uh, the, the rest of the faculty? Uh, one one of the things that uh, is also seen is that uh, as uh, what we see in the ostal lesions, they tend to have to be fibrotic and calcified as, as seen in this case. And um, that tells us that we must prepare the lesion very well. And the reason is this, because if you see with a two-stand strategy, the risk of coming back is usually at the ostium. So you need to ensure that you prepare the vessel very well, uh, prepare the lesion very well, and then when you stent it and uh, make sure that in the end, you uh, go back with a non-compliant balloon and uh, that extra work of getting the stent to be well expanded in osteum 
plays a big role in reducing the risk of resinosis in the future. Uh, Sometimes Takashi, on the yeah, longitudinal uh, Ivers uh, construction, you can see like a, if you see a spiky carina, right? A spiky carina uh, actually may suggest there's a higher risk of side branch uh, resinosis, so potentially supporting the a double stem strategy. So there's actually a question called the eyebrow side. Yeah. So the uh, so uh, Rossi already told uh, this uh, bifurcation. I mean the osteomer LAD. We need to prepare well. So um, some uh, cutting device or uh, you know squaring balloon is a better option. Uh, and another uh, uh, point is uh, this case uh, fast stance should be. Uh, stand from left main to LED or circumflex. This tight region, I mean, the, the, this LED costume yes. region, maybe the, it's better to stand from left main to LED first, then uh, second stand okay. should go to circumflex. Uh, the Rossi's lecture, he said, uh, you know, more angulated uh, vessel, we should stand first. But sometimes if the, we see a, a uh, heavy plug for main vessel, main vessel, maybe the first stand should be standard in main vessel. So maybe we should discuss which one first. So before we discuss more among the faculty, I want to take a pause to ask the fellows in the gallery, is there any hesitancy for them in this case to employ a two cent strategy? And what is their reservation as fellows? What's their worry when they embark on this style case. Uh, we'll start with my fashionably late uh, Dr. Sim Hui Wen from Singapore NUHS. Uh, Hui Wen, are you online? Hello? Yeah, Hui yes. Wen. Uh, if you look at this case as a fellows in training, what is your main concern and how, what are the questions in your mind? Um, so, uh, first, um, uh, it's obviously a two-stand strategy. Um, so, the first concern I would have is, um, because actually the, can I see the NGO image? I think it's a, quite tight. A, a bit tough, like you have to pay attention from just now. So, okay. uh, what, what, what is uh, your one concern? Then we can move on to the rest. Just tell me your one concern. I think the, because uh, both the branch, uh, the main branch and the side branch are quite tight. So I'm just worrying, uh, I just worry that if I uh, stand uh, the side branch, whether um, the other one will be jailed. So you're afraid of losing the branches yes. in the bifurcation setting. Yeah. Okay, Che Yang, what is your main concern as a fellow? Dr. Ku Che Yang. If you're not on, Dr. James Wang. Yes, um, actually, I would be most concerned about like, losing the side branch, right? Because like side branch is pretty tight, and but there's also a distal left main uh, lesion, so uh, I think it's quite um, difficult to determine which one we will place more importance in the initial part of the strategy. Yeah, so I think I hear a lot in this kind of workshop from the fellows is that they are not confident in preserving a main side branch especially you need to switch wires back and forth in the Q-lock technique. There's also a question here in the Q&A from a fellow, Hashru, about since this angulation is almost 90 degrees, isn't it better for crush or tap rather than Q-lock? So for this question, uh, maybe I can get Dr. Fahim's comment. Will you have done a Q-lock here or will you go with some form of crush or tap? Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I think that with that angulation, my preference would be to do a DK crush it doesn't mean you cannot do cool art, uh, but it, it is uh, probably, uh, if you look at the, the stresses and strains on the stent with such an angulation, you may uh, be better off doing a DK crush. Uh, however, as I said, it can be done, and I'm sure Aaron will show us uh, in, in his uh, usual expert style that how well it can be done. Okay, great. So uh, in the interest of time and uh, the patient comfort, we're going to... Go back to Aaron, let Aaron finish off everything else on camera, step by step for us to see. Can, can I Jack, just make, discussion. Can I just make one quick comment for the fellows? Yeah. I think, you know, yeah. I was- Bobby, can you switch to uh, 
imaging first, Keflab. Then while well, Fahim makes his comments. So, so for the fellows, I mean, you know, the, 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 the Ivers took about a grand total of about five or six minutes. And in those five minutes, you figured out that the vessel size is big. You are looking at probably three, five, at least in both, si in both branches. Uh, you figured out that you don't, there's not that much calcium, so you can do without rotablation. And you figured out that you need to extend the stent more proximally in the left main than you probably would have thought from the angiogram. So the IVIS has given some key pieces of information and within, with just about five or six minutes of an effort. So yep. that's the beauty of uh, imaging. It gives you information that you would otherwise have not gleaned from the angiogram. So sorry, Aaron, so sorry to delay you. Are you uh, unmuted? Can you tell us uh, your step-by-step -step now? So I see you place a stem in what you felt was a more angulated branch, a certain flex, and you're about to stand the certain flex now. Can you share with us the size and um, of the stance now? Can you unmute uh, Aaron? So we're going to proceed. So um, what we did is um, we stand the um, the third uh, mix third. Um, and then um, we uh, plan to do the collapse, stand the SERP first. I think in this case, I need to stand the SERP first because the SERP ostium is very tight. We dilated it and um, it may cause some, uh, 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 it may have a dissection that may be difficult to cross. Uh, yeah, so actually LED, you right. The LED was very uh, fibrotic and calcified. So there's balloons tripping. So we use a score flex, a scoring balloon to dilate the LED ostium. So that's what you see. So now we're going to place the um, uh, stand in a in a sub now. So it's a three o fifteen. Um, cynical. So the amount of stand that you lift in the left main, um, it depends uh, the, the, the as as minimal as possible. Okay, we can push in a little bit more actually. Yeah, yeah. So we don't want to do a classic uh, collot that uh, is too much stand starts overlapping. Yeah. Okay. Okay. One more time, cynical. I think that should be fine, yeah. So Aaron, we're going to just uh, watch you narrate through this yep. uh, okay. piece, and then we'll critique Four. your intervention later. Okay. okay, come back a little bit. So we know that we're going to stand uh, quite far back to the left main, so we're going to do just do a high pressure balloon here. Yep. Careful with the guide in, huh? because uh, uh, the, there's still some track wire here, okay. 14. So we deploy the, uh, the third stand. So uh, you have to be careful when you pull back the balloon. Uh, balloon. The, the guide may jam in, may destroy the stand structs. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah, I'm pushing the guide. Yeah. So, so I sometimes, see uh, uh, Chi Yang disengaging the guide a little bit before you pull back yeah. the balloon. Okay. So as not to have the balloon. Now we're gonna do uh, the Ivers show that it's about 4045. Um, so we're going to just go to the 40 pot NC balloon. We use a shorter one because sometimes uh, uh, the stand inside the left main is short. So uh, you don't want to injure the non standard segment in the left main. And you also don't want to um, uh, put the four, uh, too, too big balloon in the, uh, in the side branch. So this is a uh, 40. Sorry. Eight, so we can just go to uh, dilate near the carina. So the stand that we use today is um, is the Altimaster Tamsay. Uh, as mentioned by Rosley, the big vessels usually you want to use a two link uh, rather than um, uh, a more link. So this uh, Tamsay is two link uh, uh, stand. Okay, How so, much can this uh, Tansei trio go up to, Aaron? Uh, there, there are two platforms. Uh, 3O can go okay. up to 4.5. And uh, 3.5 can go to 5.5. Yeah. 12, 14, yeah. So you actually went into the serve a little bit. I think it should be fine, yeah. The tip, yeah, take up. So okay, Aaron, so at this point, the clock uh, technique, there is a lot of uh, variation. So some people will pull out the steel branch and wire the, uh, the, uh, the LED. So that's not advisable because you may lose the LED. So some people will pull back the sub, in this case, to wire it, which most of the others will do. That's what recommended by Rosley. So if you want to uh, keep both branch, sometimes you, people are using a third wire. So what we do is going to pull back the sub wire. 
um, to wire the LED. So this will ensure that the, 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 the wire is within the sensor. Yeah. So Chiang is going to pull it back uh, near the... Uh, you're on the quarter view now or front of view? We're not seeing you live. So we are wiring the LED now. Yep. Yeah, the wire is a little bit damaged, so um, maybe a little bit difficult. So we try actually not to pull back be, uh, before the stand, but uh, sometimes it's unavoidable because it may inadvertently goes into uh, um, uh, under the stand straps, yeah. So this part, uh, actually, Aaron, you have to address the fellow's fears lah, because uh, uh, as highlighted, and there's a lot of fear in losing side branch, especially your stented, the more angulated uh, branch here, which is a circumflex, like what Rossley and uh, Sydney initially spoke about. But there's also concern that the main branch is actually left main into LED. So you have kept a trap wire, you have pre-dilated the ostium of the LED, and now post-port, then you rewire back into the LED. As you can see, the wire is uh, is sort of damaged a little bit, uh, but Chiang still managed to wire the LED. So the question is, um, we, for this clock, you have to wire the distal uh, stand straps, yeah? But it's very difficult to decide which stand strap to go to, and the only way to find out is um, using OCT or, uh, or sometimes stand boost to tell us where the stand actually uh, 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 goes to. Uh. Uh, the, the wire, uh, the which stand straps that the wire go through. So <laughs> this is, is a little bit difficult uh, mm. because the wire is a bit damaged. So yeah, don't worry. We want to see you struggle. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> it doesn't turn. Uh, it doesn't turn. It went to a small branch. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hala, yeah, hala. Okay, we're doing it. Okay. 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 <coughs> okay, let me have to show you. Yep. So uh, we may change to a new wire for facilitate wiring because we may have to wire this again later on. So. So you might also want to give, I know it's a bit uncomfortable for a patient for a long procedure. Maybe so Okay, this is the side branch. We're going to park it there here. Okay, come. Uh, can we have the tour balloon come? We're going to use a, usually use a small balloon to open up first. Uh, we don't want to be too greedy, but uh, experience is that with pop, this goes in should be very easily. Yeah. yeah. So uh, after the tour, we use a trio to post dilate, uh, to dilate, and then we use a uh, stand and we just stent it yeah so we just now we use the uh, ivers to measure the length from the diagonal to where we want to stand is about 26 uh, so we might use a 20 28 yeah uh, same stent uh, uh, which three all uh, which will go up to um, four five if needed lah, which is the size it's, as you see it went in very very easily yeah you also have an advantage of a trap wire there. Yeah, correct, correct, yeah. So I usually don't take out the, the gel wire for now, yeah. So, so I, mean just, uh, I have the trio, up, please. Yeah. Yeah. We'll watch you finish up the case first. Trio? Yeah. No, 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 no. We use a trio NC balloon first, yeah. So you can put the stand in now, but the thing is sometimes uh, the it's not well dilated, so the stand may get caught there, yeah. So um, we're going to use a 3 NC balloon to open the sand straps. Open up, please, Charlie. Open up. The wire, the wire, the wire. This is a new 3 so, balloon. As you can see, uh, Jack, in this case, the wire is wrapped. So the trio balloon is not able to go in. So we're going to just take out the uh, gel wire. Okay. You pulling? Huh? You pull? I'm pulling, yeah? Pulling, okay. 
so I have to be careful. Okay, just plug it here. Come. So it should go in easily now, I hope. Not really. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Okay. So inflate 3 0. 18. Okay, down. Okay, uh, it's like uh, Rosalie mentioned, uh, nowadays they uh, give me the 3 uh, 3028. Yeah. Uh, there is a um, I think it's Zingmi, yeah, mentioned about double kiss collot. The reason being, when we do this um, uh, 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 side, uh, open up the stand shroud, the opposite end of the stand actually get pulled inside. So um, that will cause, when you rewire, it may go underneath the stand shroud. Yeah, so, um, but I think in these big vessels, um, it, it is a lot, it's, it's less likely so uh, in left main, we, I don't usually do a double, a dub, uh, sort of double kiss collot. Maybe in smaller branches, um, um, I, we, I may consider to do double kiss, yeah. So this is a uh, 3028, yeah. Uh oh, guy, guy, guy. So the wire is a little bit difficult to control, yeah. Oh, oh, okay. Okay. Okay, it went in smoothly. Okay, the wire go down. So we want to stand it just before the. Uh, uh, okay, yeah, just before the diagonal. Yeah, smooth test. Back a little bit. Back a little bit. Just. Back a bit more. Back more. Okay, yeah, see me. Been too far back, I think. Maybe you can go in a little bit, yeah, just before the bifurcation. Okay, yeah, nice. Eh? See me go. Okay. Inflating. No, me no. Nine. Ten, yeah. Yeah, expanded nicely here. Okay. So we try not to post dilate um, using this balloon, although it's it's, it's three O, but um, because there are disease in the left main, so we didn't cover the the whole uh, the stand not going, not going to cover the left main. So uh, can we use a four O, please now? So we need another pot. Same one, same one, yeah. And then uh, after pot, we will rewire the uh, uh, the circ. Now, either you use a new wire, uh, the, the other wire to wire it, or using this uh, to wire. Uh, I think both are okay. Is if you use an LED wire, it probably um, pretty sure that it's within the stand shots again, now, Yeah. Uh, but I think we're not going to use this wire. Yeah, in this because case. It's, uh, <laughs> it's already spoiled, so difficult to wire. Can we use the, uh, the run-through just now? Yeah. So I think um, for, I mean for, for PCI, um, for the wire that we use, um, actually, um, yeah, go down a bit. Uh, just use a few wire that is familiar to you, uh, that you use. Um, so to know the property of the wire, so for side branch, crossing like in bifurcation um, if you have difficulties crossing maybe a hydrophilic wire may be easier to cross yeah 14 yeah uh, yeah hala, mr lee huh? yeah, hala, huh? 再给我十分钟就好了, huh? okay can we do a stand boost um so uh if you have uh, stand boost facilities in your lab that will be good okay here huh? 14, 16. Then we have to come back a little bit more. Huh? Just one. Boost again, please. Okay. Boost. Okay, let's go up 12. Okay. Come on now, please. Can we do a Sini now? Save that, please. Yeah, it looks like pipeline, please come. 
Right plane. Okay, go. Okay. So it looks not too bad. Yeah. So there is some uh, haziness in the uh, of the cert. So that may be some calcium there. So I think after post dilatation, hopefully it will look better. Where's the run through? Here. Talk. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Talk, talk please. Okay. Hey. Oh, he's so, on. so everyone, we're, we're just oh. going to watch uh, Chi Yang wire <laughs> we in, in, in. close to Karina and uh, Distal. Yeah. Then we're going to switch to the wet lab to... Uh, yeah, sure, sure. So as you can see, um, the Chi Yang already crossed it already. Um, um, so obviously, it's small, actually it's not... Uh, wait, 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 wait. Just see me here. I don't think it's a favorable uh, position here. Can you tell me why? Why not? Uh, on the AP cranial view, it looks like very proximal. Uh, can you see the angel? Maybe cranial. Can you see me here? Oh, okay. So it looks like proximal crossing. Is that what you're saying? Yeah. So we're going to we'll try to rewire again. Yeah. Uh, maybe, yeah, pull back and then uh, maybe spider view better. Yeah. Spider view. Yeah. Okay, that looks okay. Uh, all right. uh, any tips from Rossi about judging where is proximal, where is distal? Oh, sorry. Well, for me, Jack, uh, it's always uh, the uh, the angiographic uh, images is uh, so much clearer. Uh, so I tend to go to AP caudal or even the spider to just to ensure that it's in. In the AP cranial view, sometimes uh, you can't really see that well because it cool. tends to be overlap with the uh, LED stand. Uh, so I, uh, I yep, yep. just Push based on angiographic um, uh, assessment. Occasionally, when you have difficulty getting it in direct, uh, you may actually try the reverse uh, wire technique. There's a bit more curve, and uh, hopefully, it will catch on. And then uh, from there, uh, then you can wire, and uh, it usually catches on the distal uh, stand struts first. Okay, uh, from the fellows in the gallery, any questions at the moment? Anyone who wants to ask any question? Because I, 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 we waited quite long. I think Aaron is trying to do the case in five minutes. Uh, but uh, any questions so far? Easily to the side branch, uh, to the to the third. I think that's the difference that pop actually makes. Yeah. So uh, sixteen. We have three all again. Come. Uh, we have three two five, right? Three, yes. Two, five, three all. Okay. Can we put three all in the uh, sub and three two five in the LED? We're going to kiss. Huh? No, no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fine. Yeah. So Jack, uh, the demonstration was very good because notice the wiring was that you put a big pen on your wire, you pass mm -hmm. the bifurcation, you pull back, and then you wire the when you LED have the builder. Yes, yes, correct. So I think Aaron and uh, Chiang is going to do the kissing now, followed by, do you, do you necessarily do a final port again for q uh, I think uh, with this length of stand in the left main, yes, I'll do a port because I have the 8 oh. But uh, if we, um, uh, sorry, 8 oh, no, 8 oh, millimeter, eight. 408, yeah. Yeah. So, so I will do, but if they are, Protrusion is less. I'll just do a case. Hopefully, the balloon can uh, uh, can yeah. So we are using the old balloon, uh, inflated balloon. So and the wire probably twisted a little bit, so it may be a bit difficult to go through. Yeah. So uh, for the fellow's sake, uh, when this happens, uh, uh, Doctor John or Doctor Fasila. How do you tell whether this is wire wrap or is it the stance is not well opposed? Is there any, any way to tell? Well, well, what I think is that if you're having difficulty, you're not sure whether your wire has gone under the uh, stent or it's uh, in the lumen, one oh, easy way is to take a very small balloon mm -hmm. and see whether it goes down, right? Yep. That's. That's one okay. way of saying. 
do is wire wrap. You can just gently inflate the balloon to push the wire apart and then gently just push down. So that's what we did. It went down a little bit, but now the wire has uh, lost position a little bit. So we're going to rewire it. Yeah. The third wire, please. Okay, now push down. Yeah. Yeah. So we just do a gentle pressure here. Not too far down. Pistol a little, a little bit oversized. So eight. Yeah. Okay, now before we do the thing, can we have the trio, please? Uh, can I have another in the flip? Oh, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. We just show the uh, this. Um, I use this one. Oh, I have another one. Okay. I'm holding tight. Negative for me, please. Negative, yeah. So um, most of the time we use uh, six French. Uh, but when they, the balloon is a little bit big, so sometimes they have big difficulties. Uh. That points to the the guidance by Ross Lee about uh, when you're starting out, it may be a good idea to start with a seven French, especially in the left main uh, location. It's easier to pass big, especially square balloons. Yeah. Ooh, tight. So the trio balloon it's tight. in now. It's tight, it's tight. It's very tight, uh, but... Um, is this okay, a new, new now. balloon or a square balloon? It's a square, it's a used balloon, yeah. Yeah, you are... You may want to take a new one. So sometimes... Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's okay. Oh, yeah. Got it, got it. You're yeah. trying to save some money, yeah, okay. Okay, it's yeah. fine. So, Spider, we haven't post-dialed it here. Uh... Rahim has some tricks to show later as well. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think the Aaron's point about the balloons and the, and the guide, I think it's very important to when you're taking these larger balloons out and you've got multiple wires in the in the guide, to make sure your balloon is negative. Jimmy? Get back. So pull back a little bit with high pressure. So it's important to high pressure uh, post dilatation here. Back, back a bit more. Yep. The sugar. Yeah, so, so, so. Yep. Okay, yeah. I haven't come back yet. Anyway, it's fine. Okay, 20. Okay, so now the uh, LED. 18. Okay, so we're going to do a kiss. Uh, we have to make sure that it's overlap. Huh? Okay, because the LED balloon is a bit short. Huh? Okay, put LED come back a little bit more. Okay, yeah, come, go up. Uh, 8. Okay, come down together on three, huh? One, two, three. So like Leslie, uh, Leslie, <laughs> Rosley mentioned that we have to go up and down, uh, come down especially at the same time so that it doesn't uh, create shift of Carina, huh? Okay. So we're going to do an angel and then after this, an Ivers, uh, and then we probably finish the procedures, huh? Okay. Okay, that's, uh, that's good. Um... I'm going to uh, let you finish up the case because I think the patient is a bit restless. So I, I'm going to show uh, some guidance on the web lab first before I move on to the live demo for whatever you want to demonstrate by Ning Yen. So I'm going to share this. Uh, are you able to see this, guys? Still negative. So this is a demonstration by Dr. Takashi. Um, so uh, Obi-Wan, can you, do you mind if you mute the cat lab? Just so this is showing the pot. Stem plugs and side bars is widely open and it's easier to rewire for side bars. If you want to out up the main one stem, it is difficult to rewire the side bars. Very soft. You to focus on the wiring. Or 
caused by kissing while in operation. If he wants to, then starts to cover hand in the colony. It causes a potential risk of this stenosis in the future. You should try this so we lie on the Um, thanks for that, uh, Dr. Takashi. Um, do you have any comments uh, to those demonstrations on the web lab as well? Okay, so uh, in this uh, demo, uh, I want to emphasize just two points. One point is a uh, pot uh, already discussed. So pot doesn't mean uh, just a proximal dilatation. Proximal, optimal, you know, uh, dilatation. So the, the first, the, the pots, uh, your balloon, the distal marker of your balloon should uh, point at the collina. And uh, you have to choose a, a appropriate size of pot balloon. Then uh, you can cross uh, your guide wire easily. Uh, this uh, image is oh, this uh, rewiring. Yeah, so this is a pot, uh, appropriate pot. Okay. So the after this is not uh, pot, so your wire cannot go into the proximal. Uh, part of the stance, even if you go the wire, but uh, this position is not good. So, the so I, right. I just want to uh, take a pause here and uh, maybe uh, emphasize that, you know, uh, Aaron plays a 3-0 stand in the left hand. So this is probably for the fellow sake, this is probably what it looks like. If you did not attend a pot and you're too anxious to get back into the side branch, the chances of the wire going under the sand strut or not That's getting right. properly into the vessel is very high. So, uh, any comments from the faculty on this part? Well, I, I agree. I mean, I, I think for the part, as as uh, was just said, it's important that the you know the inner margin of the distal marker should be just at the carina because uh, beyond the inner marker, the uh, the balloon tap tapers very rapidly, and so you need to make sure that. The, the stent is precisely dilated um, at the carina, and so you have to make sure that the inner inner margin of the distal marker is right at the carina, uh, as was demonstrated in, in this uh, in this uh, example, um, and that so, that plays an important role. So um, actually, uh, Rosley and and uh, Sydney also talk about proximal versus distal wiring. So this is a demonstration of what happens in proximal wiring. Do you, can you really appreciate this on angiogram actually, if it's not bench and does it really contribute to a adverse outcome? What, what do you guys think, uh, Rossi and Sydney? Um, so I, I think that there, um, it's hard to know because I think that, I don't think we systematically know where you've recrossed. We don't systematically do stent boost or clear stent to see the stent distortion. And you've seen on the bench, it looks much better if you distal rewire because there's much better distribution and coverage of the ostium of the side branch, even if you do provisional. So I think that it's not necessarily correlated with clinical outcome, and we don't know. Uh, but I think that generally, it does probably increase mace events in the side branch because of the uh, change in the flow dynamics and shear. The other thing is about the length for the pot. You, when you're sizing your length of stent, you have to make sure you have enough length proximally to do a pot with a balloon so the balloon doesn't hang out uh, about you know, eight or 10 millimeters. Yeah, and I share your views, uh, Sydney, because I feel that uh, one should uh, try as much. Uh, one of the things I do if, if I'm, I'm not sure is that I take a Sydney. And once you take a Sydney, then uh, and, uh, you, you sort of magnify, and sometimes you can use a stand vessel vis, you see stand boost and you jet contrast. You can actually see uh, the, that, uh, the uh, you know, whether you got it in proximal or in distal uh, stand struts. 
So some of the things that may actually help you, but uh, yes, uh, it's not uh, you know it's you're you're not correct in all the all the times. But in the end, uh, you have to make do with what you have and ensure that uh, the stands are well expanded as much as possible before you kiss. Okay, so this point always confuses fellow about wiring distal, wiring proximal. We can discuss a little bit more. It, I wanted to show you the bench model live as well for you to appreciate what happens proximal distal. Just to bring it up in your mind, whether you translate the outcome or not, we think it does. There's no concrete proof because it's very difficult to prove that it's actually proximal versus distal. I suspect those osteoristenosis is due to this, some of that creating a false uh, carina as well. So uh, before we do, uh, I want to show another tips and tricks as well uh, for the next uh, demonstration. Just now you saw that uh, Aaron had problem crossing uh, the side branch with a square balloon. So let's see a tip and trick. Crossing a side branch stand using an anchor balloon support. Here we have a situation where we have a crushed side branch stand marked by the white arrow and a balloon marked by the red arrow that we're trying to cross with. We're not able to do so and we place an anchor balloon in the main branch stand marked by the yellow arrow and we're going to inflate this and use this to support the apparatus that allows crossing into the side branch. This technique can be used in any bifurcation technique, be it culotte or DK crush. And as you see over here, the main branch balloon is now inflated. And now with some effort, that previously uncrossable balloon is now able to make its way into the side branch stand, allowing you to complete the procedure. So that's also quite a neat uh, demonstration by uh, Fahim, showing that if you have sometimes a problem crossing after you have positioned it, uh, an anchoring balloon helps uh, save some equipment or they pull out a new uh, balloon as well. Um, OP Van, do you mind if you go back to Aaron and uh, Chi Yang and see where they are at now? We share the cath lab screen. So uh, can we unmute uh, Aaron and Chiang? So we 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 uh, Ivers the uh, LED looks uh, uh, acceptable, and we are try to push down the Ivers to the third. It looks like it's not um, uh, not crossing. Yeah, Maybe so because of the angle. Yeah, yeah because of the angle. Uh, yeah. I, I I wouldn't try too hard, Aaron. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, correct, yeah. yeah. Okay, so I think we will just show you the uh, take, take out. Take, it's fine, it's fine. Just show you the iris for the LED, and then we we'll probably done here. Do you have uh, Andrew to show us? Uh, yes, um, we have one uh, for that. We just look at the angel before the iris, please. Yeah. So this is the angel. Yeah, as usual, angel looks fantastic, Aaron. Uh, Very nice. Yeah. So play the iris from the LED to the left me. So this part, uh, maybe I'll ask uh, Dr. Takashi, Sydney, and the rest, uh, what are you actually looking out for post-application oh, stenting, Ivers? Uh, Chia, um, comment first, sorry. Yeah. All right. Uh, okay, can we start from the beginning? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so let, let's start, start the pullback from, from the beginning. So this is, um, play, this is the mid-LED distal to the stand edge. So on Angel, it, it looked... You know, not too bad on on, on Ivers. Uh, as usual, we see uh, a bit more plug than we realize on Angel. This is this, diagonal, yeah. Yeah. So the distal stenage will come up here. Uh, so distal stent anytime post PCI, uh, we want to know whether there are any stenage uh, complications. So that distal stenage looked okay. The other things we want to look out for post PCI would be expansion, apposition. Um, so how well the uh, the stent is expanded compared to the reference segments, and whether there are any struts hanging. So there was none of that. This is already in the left main. And you can see that there's uh, still you know, disease in the left main, obviously. Um, but where we have landed, uh, we haven't caused any trauma to the, uh, to the plaque, so there's no dissection. And it was all uh, very well opposed um, throughout. So 
uh, I don't think we will Iverse the cert because I think of the angle, the Iverse the catheter not able to uh, to cross. Um, Can so, I ask uh, in Japan, right? Uh, since they do a lot of imaging for this, is it necessary to really make sure you have a final Iverse on both branches? Okay. Uh, yes, uh, if possible, yes. Yeah. But in this case, the angulation is very, you know, uh, it's difficult to pass uh, this uh, IVAS. You may try a uh, Terumo IVAS, maybe it, it passes easily to the, you know, this uh, tight, uh, you know, region or this angle. But uh, uh, yeah, uh, in this case, um, our position is good and uh, expansion is also good. The, I think it's acceptable for, you know, uh, this case. Can I ask Dr. Fazila, if you don't have IVERS, will you have done anything differently, even without IVERS? Yeah, for a double stent technique, it's always ideal to have an IVERS. And especially when you're doing a culotte technique, where you expect quite a bit of double metal mass in the proximal part of your uh, main vessel. So uh, if you don't have IVERS to make sure that your stent struts are properly opposed, what I would do is I would make, be absolutely sure that I do a proper job of uh, pot because I have to make the struts properly opposed to the wall to get a good long-term uh, result. Uh, so make a really good job of doing the proximal optimization and also take good angio shots to see what my final result is, whether there is any dissection or any slow flow or any other thing that I have left behind that was not detected properly. Because, so because uh, as we have discussed, imaging really helps us in deciding these. So if I don't have imaging, I have to be extra cautious and extra sure that I do a great job before I say that I'm done. Okay. Dr. Joe, you have any comments or teaching points uh, from what Aaron did before we move on to uh, questions from the panels? we do the same with uh, Dr. Fazila Malik. And I think uh, if you don't have uh, imaging IVAS or OCT, um, I think final recheck angiogram as much as possible to see anything complications and then, and sometimes uh, stand bulls or stand base might be useful to see any, you know, uh, stand expansion. So basically I would do the same as uh, Dr. Fazila Malik or support. Uh, thanks, uh, thanks um, Dr. Joe. Actually, uh, one of our participants, uh, not a fellow, Dr. Paul Ong asked very good questions. Maybe I'll defer Paul Ong's question to someone else. Uh, he feels that proximal distal wire crossing has no difference since both ostium are completely covered by the stents. And, uh, and also, he asks, is there any disadvantage in this type of case to stand right to the left main ostium? Do you, do you find any difference in just covering to the left main ostium and therefore have more flexibility in the port and post dilatation? Rosli, is that your practice? Uh, if the left main is relatively normal, do you need to stand to the ostium necessarily? Uh, I don't think so. I don't think it's necessary, but uh, you just need uh, to ensure that you've got enough length uh, for the uh, uh, pot because you don't want to lend it to bit uh, outside the stand struts. But uh, in this case, I would have actually uh, extended a bit more because you can see that uh, the area that it was uh, landed, there was still some disease over there. I'll probably use it a bit longer uh, in this case. So Jack, in terms yep. of um, of imaging, so if you, you don't want to leave more than 50% plaque burden on either inch of a stent is correlated with increased events. So if you saw a lot of plaque left main, you may be forced to uh, extend the stent to the ostium. So the imaging may push you one way. Uh, if you didn't see that much plaque there, so you, you probably don't have to. And um, and I agree with Dr. Uh, Takashi about the, you know, when you do post, you want to look at proximal distal stent edge for edge dissection. And commonly, if you dissect it, you'll put another, a second short stent there. And then, of course, you look at the stent uh, apposition and uh, stent expansion. And of course, you're aiming for, you know, like 
you know, uh, those numbers you've heard from Dr. Jang, five, six, seven, eight, and maybe a bit bigger in the left main in Excel, more than 10 millimeters or more in the, in the left main, you want to get the good minimal stent area for reducing uh, event rates long term. So, you know, translatable from the trial. Again, uh, people keep emphasizing on imaging. So now we're going to move on to a lecture by Dr. Fan, just focusing on imaging. A quick five, ten, eight minutes lecture on uh, imaging in left main bifurcation PCI. Uh, Timmy, you want to share your screen? Uh, Dr. Fan, are you okay to present? Uh, you're Hi. muted, I think. Yeah, can you hear me, guys? Yep. You want to share your screen? Yes, I just shared it. Uh, can you all see? Yep. Okay. Go ahead. Okay. So, uh, thank you very much. Today, I'll be talking about the use of IVERS in left main uh, bifurcation. So, some of the technical challenges operators face in uh, left main stenting include the fact that distal bifurcation is often seen in up to 80% of the time. And sometimes there's a mismatch between the proximal main vessel and the distal uh, side branch vessel size requiring proximal optimization technique or port for short, as we talk about. So if you look at the right side of the uh, diagram, we have Finette's law that depicts a relationship between the diameter of the left mean and the LED and circumflex. So ideally, the left mean diameter should be two thirds the sum of the LED and circumflex. And it's important to perform a uh, port in this case as uh, it's been shown to reduce malposition and elasticity and increases the proximal stand expansion. Now the austere position of the main vessel also requires the use of a stand with a high radial strength, uh, such as that of the Ultimaster or Tanse. And classification is frequently encountered requiring more aggressive uh, lesion preparation. And because the side branch uh, tends to supply a large dietary, in this case, for this uh, life case, like the uh, circumflex, um, the risk of hemodynamic compromise is high, requiring beyond stenting. So in order, in order to overcome these technical challenges, optimal PCI is necessary to improve clinical events and this will include the use of intracoronary imaging such as IVERS, the use of appropriate uh, bifurcation technique, and optimal DES. Now, um, IVERS is now readily accepted as injunctive tool in PCI, as seen in this case here. And uh, according to the latest uh, 2018 uh, ESC guidelines on myocardial vascularization, IVERS is actually considered like a class 2A recommendation uh, in selected patients to optimize stand implantation uh, to assess the severity of uh, unprotected left main lesions and to optimize treatment after standing. And this has actually been translated into a clinical practice uh, in some form. So here uh, we have a slide that shows the results of an internet-based survey conducted among the European and Japanese uh, interventionists. So as seen here, uh, among 1,100 uh, responses to guide left mean interventions and uh, assess intermediate left mean lesions and to guide uh, intervention in bifurcations from some of the common uh, indications. So as you can see here, uh, IVERS allows the operators to obtain uh, precise wall measurements and uh, for us to understand the underlying plaque composition of a diseased vessel, some features which may not be so readily apparent on plate angiography. So rather than just uh, using the naked eye uh, visual assessment, IVERS derived minimal lumen area, uh, as seen in the central part of the diagram, allow us to determine whether a left vein lesion is significant or not. And, we need to, and if it lies within a gray zone of 4.5 to 6 mm square, one can consider the use of FFR. And uh, using IVERS, you can also see or exclude whether there's any uh, troublemakers in the lesser landing zone. And this will help us to decide on uh, the operate stand length and diameter. Now, it's also important to do a 